scenic pastures and pristine white barns have watched over 70 years of Iowa sunrises. And they're not alone, because at Maytag Dairy Farms, someone else sees every dawn. The cheesemakers. We start early in the morning. First person comes in at 5.30 a.m. to start up the operations. He'll get the milk pumping to the cheese vats and we'll add our first culture in by 6.30 a.m. That industrious attitude carries over into every detail of making Maytag blue cheese. From the recipe, dating back over 70 years to scientists at Iowa State University, to the hooping, all done by hand, to the aging, all completed under careful and knowledgeable observation, to meticulous hand wrapping. It's these steps that set Maytag blue cheese apart. When people hear the name Maytag, they associate it with another industry, and they don't realize that we're a very small, hands-on um, cheese plant here. I think part of it is that we've been doing this in this kind of an old world way or a European type uh, way of making cheese since 1941, and we have never changed. Traditional blue cheese is made from sheep's milk, but Maytag's traditional recipe has always used homogenized cow's milk. And tradition, as well as experience, also plays a role in the hard work of crafting between 600 and 800 wheels of cheese a day. I am a third generation cheesemaker. My grandfather and father were cheesemakers back in Wisconsin. My dad taught me how to make cheese when I was 12 years old. One summer, I happened to say I'm bored. So my dad put me to work, and I've never been bored since. Maytag uses local milk from dairy farms within a 15-mile radius of their central Iowa farm. The cheesemakers take pride in aging their cheese just the right amount of time. It could take six or seven months, but the flavor, appearance and quality are the rewards when these expert tasters check out the cheese. Wow, that's good. That's really good. I, I look at appearance, uh, that it has proper veining, um, that it has that open curd structure that I'm looking for um, to develop the mold. Then I'm also looking um, for aroma. It has to have that slightly pungent but clean aroma. Uh, I'm also looking for a creamy mouthfeel, that it's something that's very buttery, very um, smooth texture to the body of the cheese. And uh, aesthetically, I want it to be as white as possible. That's one of the things that we achieve by using Holstein milk. It has a, a whiter appearance than some of the other breeds. And then I'm looking for that slightly pungent, but that peppery bite is what I really want. Um, I want it to clean up so it doesn't leave anything on the palate. If it's something that you're gonna cook with or develop with other flavors, you want a very clean, sharp cheese, uh, that peppery bite, but you want it to clean up and it works so well in recipes. And I think that's why we appear on so many menus and so many chefs use our cheese. Um, it's not that we're that large, but they seek us out. Um, and uh, I think one of the reasons is because it works so well in the kitchen setting. Folks here at Maytag Dairy Farms welcome visitors. There's a retail shop, tours, and a chance to sample some of this famous cheese. The company is still owned by members of the Maytag family, and after more than 70 years, the product simply speaks for itself. It's been word of mouth. This, it seems to get in chefs' hands. They talk about us, they put us on their menu. Uh, again, it's just one of those things that we've been so busy making cheese and, and trying to um, maintain the quality of the cheese that we haven't had time to focus on marketing. You know, maybe at some point we will have to, um, but this is such a story that, that if we ever do have to market ourselves, um, all we have to do is tell our story and, and relate our history. Uh, and that's really why our cheese is what it is today.